Hi everybody, I'm Prerna Mukharja and I run a social enterprise called Outline India. I want to take a couple of uh, minutes to talk about data in the development sector. And I'm a numbers person, so bear with me. Um, we're a very big country, very, very big, a lot of people, 1.25 billion plus, and we're growing uh, at a very fast rate, right? Now, if I was to take a moment and think about the percentage of our population, the percentage of people who are actually online, it's only about 30% and people don't seem to like these figures. People are not happy because these are not the real figures. The actual figures are actually lower. What does this really mean for us? This means that about 840 million Indians are not online. So when we talk about social media, when we talk and debate or what's going on in JNU or when we're discussing uh, our flip cards and our tech companies or we're discussing our Twitter feeds, we're really not talking about this superset of our population. I'm not going to say subset. We're not talking about about 900 million Indians, uh, most of whom uh, live across uh, rural and remote parts of India. My company, Outline India, is an effort in this direction. Uh, we're about data in the development sector. We're about building capacity at the ground level. We're about human connect. My company is an effort to try and reach out to these 800 million plus Indians whose voices, whose opinions, and whose needs don't make it to our Facebook walls, or our Twitter feeds, or our LinkedIn's. And we do this via data. I deploy people um, across the country. Uh, we develop data sets. We do a lot of numbers. We do a lot of analytics. Uh, so whether you're a philanthropist looking to invest money at the ground level and you don't know how, whether you're looking to set up schools and you don't know where these schools should be set up, whether you're looking to build toilets and you don't know who these toilets should be for, whether you're looking to set up hand pumps because you don't have good cleaning, drinking water, these are the kind of decisions that my company helps these stakeholders take. And our stakeholders include everybody ranging from a university, a PhD student such as you, philanthropists, academics. And these are individuals not just based in India, but individuals based abroad as well. Um, I'm going to talk about why data in the development sector is not easy, right? Why is it that I think this is such an important cause? Um, like I said, you know, we're a very big country. Uh, we're about 700 plus languages, maybe 2,000 plus dialects. What works in a Madhya Pradesh does not work in an Odisha. We have a very hot Rajasthan and a very cold Kashmir. Uh, we have areas that are politically sensitive. We have issues of insurgency. We have religious um, sensitive areas such as Uttar Pradesh. So when you go in and you're looking to talk to people, it always does not seem as easy deploying people on the ground and going into their households and asking for their time. But somebody has to do this and who better than young, young people like us, right? What about if young people like you and I were to come together and help the government in its mission to set up so social schemes, to set up policy measures that were actually based on what these people told us? and not so much about just sitting in our fancy offices and making these decisions on their behalf. So what if we were to build metrics and indicators that factored in their needs and opinions? Um, I'm going to take a couple of examples uh, to give you a sense of the kind of work we do. Um, so you know, this is a story about us in Uttar Pradesh and we take a train to Kanpur. From Kanpur, you know, we spend a night in a small hotel and then we take a local train uh, to a town center, which takes about five hours. Our, the village that we are to get to is still about 12 hours away, so then we put up at a small guest house in that village. Uh, in the morning, we are all crammed up in this local train. There are no tickets, and the train stops at the station for 30 seconds. And in a little coupe that has three birds on this side, three birds on this side, and two birds across, we are actually about 25 people crammed up. There's no place for your luggage. You're sitting on your suitcase. And mind you, these are winters, so it's super duper cold. So we get onto this train, and about four hours later, uh, you know, we are very close to our destination, and we off board. And uh, there are no hotels, no motels. There are some dharamshalas, which is where my field team stays. 
and uh, we actually end up staying at the shadi hall a marriage hall because you know shadi stay is everywhere so uh, we reached this place at 5 am now we've got a field work to do and mind you again our field work is not in this gaon the gaon is still about 3 hours away by a car so we take these big cars and we leave early in the morning because these are sensitive areas so you want to leave in the morning but you definitely want to come back before it's sundown before it gets dark so we go we do a field work but we're back before 2:30 and we lock ourselves up in the room post lunch because you know it's not really safe to step out and um, this is the shadi hall right so around 5 o'clock we're all locked up we're working on our laptops mind you there's no uh internet forget uh, you know 4g's and 3g's there's no internet you get you barely get cell phone uh, reception and about 5:30 in the evening a honey sing starts playing so you don't have progress you may not have x you may not have y but globalization ladies and gentlemen honey sing plays through the night and this is a village where it is as common place to uh, hold a katta or a small gun in one hand and a bag of vegetables in another so there's we see an auntie riding on a scooter and she's got a katta in one hand happily and you know uh, that super transy bag of sabjis in the other Um, I'm going to take uh, another example, uh, and this is uh, me in a remote place in Chhatpur. So we get to Kodarma, and from Kodarma, another couple of hours, we go to this place called Gawa, and uh, you know, uh, and, and this is a largely tribal population. And we get there, and I'm with my field supervisor, and I'm with my uh, female uh, field co-worker, and we knock on households, and obviously we can sense sense that you know there are people inside those households, but nobody comes to the door to open. and we knock again and then about 2 minutes later this uh, intimidating man steps out and he's got a massive axe in one hand you know like uh, I, i don't know if that's very gangs of asipur of, of him but you know he steps out with this big axe in one hand and we like acha you know we don't know what's happening next and uh, you know he asks us uh, you know very simple clean and eerie silence and he says to us uh, aap sarkar se hain and you know translates to are you from the government and uh, you know we are not from the government so we say to him no you know we are from a private research agency or an ngo and he's like acha that that's fine and then he lets us do our work the the clincher here is that in these parts uh, if you are from the government they take you captive and then they ask uh, the government for ransom so you know uh, you know so we got away with that by not being from the government uh, so you know i'd like to thank my supervisor for this and uh, you know i i don't have a picture of that but you know these are people uh, these parts are so remote that people go out boar hunting with their bows and arrows so you know uh, like i said you know we're sitting in this very fancy room today but there's still a very big india where these things are as common place um i'm going to take another example uh, of me being in rural rajasthan and these two women that you see with pallus on their heads uh, they're about 24 22 year olds with a bunch of children and uh, they tell me ki uh, in their village you don't have the respect of their elders till you've had a girl child so what they tell me is uh, son no a son is not good enough you have to have a daughter to earn the respect of your elders and your subordinates And you know, we think, hey, you know, in a country like India, that's a great sign. Not all is lost. We must be doing something right. Um, you know, uh, I'm just uh, going to talk about uh, some of the work that we've done in Outline. Um, we worked in 21 states, uh, as the gentleman uh, you know, politely pointed out in my introduction. We've done a thousand villages plus, most of which are in rural or remote parts. Uh, we've done an indirect. Uh, Uh, capacity building of maybe a hundred x of the twenty thousand plus stakeholders we've interacted with, and we're looking to grow up, grow from here. We're looking at a Bangladesh growing further, and maybe scaling up our operations in India. But uh, you know, uh, I I often talk about this to people because they ask me, Prerna, data is a big problem in this country, and we forever we are growing and we keep growing. So you know, is this a finite solution? or is there a finite solution and i say you know solution ka to pata nahi but you know but you've always got to start somewhere so then they ask me as an obvious next question you know how did you know when to start how did you know where to start uh, you know what was your glory moment 
and I like to tell people that, dude, there is no right point to start, right place to start. There will be no glory moment. The sun will still be shining. You will still be carrying those extra kilos. Your relationship will still be far from perfect. Your mother will still be screaming at you. Your bank account will still be running low. So there is no one right moment when you will get out there and everything will be fine. Right? Of course, within reasonable limits and reasonable uh, situations, the only time to start is to just start now. Right? Um, then again, you know, when you start, it always has to be for the right reasons. It cannot be for money, it cannot be for fame. Of course, you know, these are things that drive a lot of people, but money and fame can't make you get out of bed day after day, night after night, week after week, and month after month. Um, because you will not just have crappy days and crappy weeks, you'll have crappy months, and these will be stories that will not make it to your Facebook wall. So, uh, you know, a TEDx talk today will make it to my company's Facebook page and my LinkedIn and my Twitter feed, but my crappy stories don't make it to my wall because th those are things that I maybe go through alone at some level. And that's when I think the resilience steps in, right? Um, you know, I've had stories of, uh, I spend sleepless nights when my female field workers are out there in the field and I am worried for their safety. Or, you know, my field worker calls me up and says, Madam, uh, tablet toot gaya. And I say, you know, we do digital service. And I say, tablet you toot gaya. So he's like, Madam, I was taking GPS coordinates and a goat attacked me. So a goat came running towards me, hit me in my bum and I fell down and, you know, the tablet cracked. And, uh, you know, these are stories that you will hear time to time. So, I tell people that, you know, when you go out there and start doing something, it really has to be a reason that's coming from deep, deep down, a reason uh, uh, that's in your heart. Um, whatever you do uh, will involve a lot of sacrifices. It will be your time away from things you dearly love. It will be your time away from those extra hours of sleep over weekends. It will be your time away from Game of Thrones. It will be your time away from uh, maybe, you know, that chiclet you've been wanting to read. It will be your time away from your friends. Which is why the reasons have to be so damn compelling that you want to get out of bed every single day. Doesn't matter whether you've had a breakup, whether you're going through a tough time at home, whether your scores are at an epic low, it does not matter. The reason will be bigger than you. And what bigger reason than, you know, try to trying to change the life of another individual. I think we spend too much time on our cell phones and our Wi-Fi's, you know. Talk to people, talk to the person sitting next to you and try and understand maybe what's going on with their lives. It's a great experience. Um, the other thing is, I guess, you know, plugging in day after day. It will never get easy, but I guess uh, the only thing that really stops us from achieving big things in life is maybe just us. We end up thinking that, you know, maybe my CGPA was lower than his, maybe he's a tad bit smarter, maybe I didn't get into a DCE, so maybe that guy deserves it more. That person got into a BCG, so maybe, you know, they might be much smarter than at an Infosys, I don't know. You know, the only reason we stop ourselves a lot of times is because we think we're probably not good enough at what we're setting out with. But that's not a reason good enough. There has to be, like I said, a reason bigger than you and I, uh, maybe working towards the greater good. Um, I'm going to take this one example of an Excel sheet, and you know, this is my second last time. It's a lot of numbers packed together, right? And all of us look at so, so much data day after day. We sift through Excel sheets, we look at magazines, we look at newspapers. But what if you took a moment just now and thought about the story behind that circle number? What does that number mean? Think about the story that goes behind it. Think about that guy who braved the heat or the cold and walked 10 kilometers to get you that piece of information. Or think about that individual who put in so much money to invest in a research project to uh, that would lead to the setting up of a program that would establish a public hospital in a small village in the middle of nowhere. So the next time maybe you think about a data set, think about the story and how personal it is. Think small sometimes maybe. Think about the lowest common denominator. And you know, 
I, I, I'll leave you with this thought. Um, when you set up a goal in life, uh, let that goal be super big, something that scares you, something that scares the bejesus out of you. So think really big. Let the people at the other end think, this is a you know, off his rocker or off her rocker. But also think super small. Think about you know, uh, anything that humbles you. Think about that one person whose life you might change along the way. Thank you.